I'm joined now by Alderman of Chicago's 15th Ward, Raymond Lopez. Uh, Alderman, thanks for being with us. Welcome back to the program. What are Thank you, you What are you most looking forward to as uh, Chicago has highlighted this week during the DNC? Well, Marnie, I love my city, and I'd love to showcase the best that it has to offer. But I also know that there are individuals thousands of individuals descending upon my city for the sole purpose of causing chaos in the streets. And that, I think, is really going to be the dual message that we see come out of this convention. On one hand, you have my city, a democratic city, a long-run democratic city, trying to showcase itself. While at the same time, you have police who are going to be struggling to deal with these individuals who you just highlighted in the previous segment. You have stores that are terrified of potential rioting and looting. And you have communities that don't know whether or not 911 calls will be answered because so many resources are being put to the test during this convention. What are some of the preparations that you're hearing from those in your ward getting ready for the potential of violence anytime you have an event this large? Well, we know that our superintendent and our police have said that they're going to maintain both the safety of the convention and the safety of the neighborhoods. But we know that from Lightfoot to Johnson, there has been a steady stream of disinvestment in our police that are that is going to leave us surely lessened when it comes to keeping people safe. Right now, uh, uh, as I speak, there are 294 police vehicles that are out of commission that should have been on the street in preparation for this. We know that major 911 call, many 911 calls are not going answered unless there's a homicide or a shooting, which means burglary and things of that nature, lower level crimes are not being answered. And all of those impact the quality of life that we see. So what I'm encouraging residents in my ward and throughout the city is to work together, stand together, and let's hold our own during this next four days so that we can keep our city intact and not allow these outside usurpers to come and destroy our, our great city. You talk about those intent on violence and some of those in your ward boarding up their businesses. Are you hearing much chatter about the intent on some of these outlying groups to cause damage? Well, we have seen where some of these groups, even emboldened by our mayor, emboldened by some of my socialist colleagues, have made it a calling card to make this greater than 1968 and to go home with police earned bruises, meaning that they want to engage physically with our law enforcement, even though our law enforcement wants to go home safely every night during this convention. So our fear is that while many protesters may be here just to speak their mind, there is going to be a contingent here that's looking to engage the police, looking to provoke them and to cause harm to themselves for the purposes of earning their marks during this convention. And it's unfortunate that they're using Chicago to do that. What does communication look like between you and other city leaders in an event this of this scale? Um, if, if things do end up going sideways at one point or another, how do you communicate that and convey uh, the danger and the plan to, to those in your area? Well, I was here in office in 2020 when we saw the, the civil unrest after George Floyd's murder. And I will tell you personally that none of the lessons that we learned from the missteps in communication under the Lightfoot administration have been rectified under the Johnson administration, because I don't know what the plan is. And it has not been shared with all members of city council. It has not been shared with all members of 77 communities throughout the city of Chicago. And I think if things were to go sideways, which we, none of us want to see happen, we're going to be reinventing the wheel again, but more so at a time when many of the law enforcement that are here to help us maintain law and order in the, in the, during the, the convention have not been granted police powers by the Johnson administration. So those individuals will not be able to legally arrest anyone because Mayor Johnson has not allowed that authority to be granted to them. What are the conversations you're having with other fellow aldermen in preparation for, for today and the days ahead? You know, many of us are just committed to staying in our wards, staying connected with our community leaders and stakeholders to ensure that we are all aware of what's going on, that we're working with our local police districts to ensure that the most necessary calls are being answered and that we are maintaining vigilance. And I think that is the most important message for all of us is that we must maintain our vigilance during the next four days so that nobody finds a weak spot in the armor and takes advantage of it. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.